Hello learners, welcome to NIOS studio. This program is based on senior secondary chemistry course. I am Dr. Alka Mehrotra. We will be discussing about lesson 7 solutions. During this part of the program, we will discuss the different types of solutions, concentration of solution in different ways and Henry's law. So, the objective of part 1, different types of solutions, concentration of solutions in different ways and Henry's law. In the previous classes, you have studied about compound and mixture, where mixture can be divided into homogeneous and heterogeneous mixture. So, homogeneous mixture are called solution where the dissolved particles cannot seen. So, if you see here, when we put sugar into water, it dissolves to form a solution. In this you can see, we do not see any more sugar in it. Like sugar, a large number of other substances such as common salt, urea, potassium chloride, etc. dissolve in water forming a solution. In su all such solutions, water is the solvent and substances which dissolves are solute and this is a heterogeneous solution because here you can see the different two layers. That is why it is a heterogeneous mixture. So, the homogeneous mixture is a solution. So, solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances in same or different physical phases. The substances forming the solution are called components of the solution. So, in the solution we have two components, one is solute and other is solvent. So, solute and solvent, what exactly are they? Solvent. The component that is present in largest quantity is called solvent. It determines the physical state of solution. Now here you can see water is a solvent. Now solute, one or more components present in solution other than solvent is called solute. So in this solution which I showed you just now, there sugar or salt that is a solute. So what is binary solution? Solution consisting of two components only are known as binary solution. So, solutions can be solid, liquid or gaseous depending on the physical state of solute and the solvent. There are nine possible types of solutions consisting of two components. So, they are the binary solution. So, if you see on the chart, so solute and solvent should be there that form solution. If it is a gaseous solution, it means all the solvent, the solvent we will take as a gaseous state. So, if solid is dissolved in gas like camphor in air, that is the example, this is known as a gaseous solution. The other example of gaseous solution is humidity in air. So, humidity is liquid in nature or liquid in state and that is dissolved in gas. The other is air. Like air is a mixture of oxygen and nitrogen, so gas dissolved in gas. Then we have the liquid solutions. Liquid solution means again, so the solution in which the solvent is liquid, they are known as liquid solution. So when solid is dissolved in liquid like sugar in water, that is a liquid solution. When liquid dissolved in liquid, that is alcohol in water or when gas dissolved in liquid, that is the soda water or the oxygen in water. Then we have a solid solution. It means there the solvent is solid in nature. So when solid solute is dissolved in solid solvent like brass and any alloy like zinc and copper or bronze, tin and copper. When liquid dissolved in solid that is mercury in gold when gas dissolved in solid that is hydrogen in palladium, so they are the solid solutions. Now in this chapter, mainly we will be studying liquid solution, where the solvent is liquid and the solute may be solid or liquid or gas. So now how to check the concentration of the solution? Now what is the concentration? Concentration of a solution is defined as a relative amount of solute present in a solution. On the basis of concentration of solution, there are two types of solution. 
one is dilute other is concentrated. Dilute solution in which the solute a quantity is lesser while in concentrated solution where the solute quantity is more. So, there are several ways of describing concentration of solution. They include molarity, molality, normality, mole fraction and mass percentage. Now, let us check one by one. So, in that first we should understand concentration where the amount of solute present in given amount of solvent. Let solvent be represented by A and solute by B. So, method of expressing concentration is one is mass percentage. If you have to find percentage of B that is solute, so we will uh, find it by uh, dividing mass of the solute by mass of the solution. It means mass of the solute plus mass of the solvent into 100. Then volume percentage, as we are taking volume, it means when we have to take out the volume of B that is solute, it means we have to take volume. So, volume of B upon volume of solution into 100. Now, volume of solution when we are talking it means we are taking the volume of solute and the volume of solvent. Then mass per volume percentage. Here m upon v percent of b because as we are taking solute. So, mass of the solute divided by volume of solvent plus volume of solute into 100. Then mole fraction suppose we take it as x. So, x b is equal to n b upon n a plus n b n is the number of mole. Now, uh, let us do the difference between molarity and molality because this is a really very important concept. So, that is why I am going to explain it by taking the difference between these two. So, molarity is defined as a number of moles of solute dissolved per liter of solution while molality is defined as the number of moles of solute dissolved per kg or per kilogram of solvent. So, if you see there is a major two difference there we have taken per liter that is volume of solution here, we, here in molality we are taking mass that is kilogram of solvent. Now, molarity is denoted by capital M while molality is denoted by small m. Molarity is expressed as capital M is equal to N upon V where N is the number of moles of solute and V is the volume of solution in liter. And molality is expressed as small m is equal to 1000 into NB upon WA where NB is number of moles of solute and WA is mass in gram of solvent. That is why we have taken 1000 because we need to find it out in kilogram. Now, molarity of solution changes with temperature because expansion or contraction of the solution. While molality of solution does not change with temperature because this is not with respect to the volume. Now, when we talk about molar solution, suppose if we talk about 2 molar solution, it means 2 mole per liter of sulfuric acid would be labeled as 2 capital M H2SO4. It is prepared by adding 2 mole of H2SO4 or sulfuric acid to water to make a liter of solution. While when we talk about 2 molar solution, then we say 2 small m H2SO4 is read as 2 molar that is 2 mole per kg sulfuric acid and is prepared by adding 2 mole of sulfuric acid to 1 kg of solvent. Now, let us discuss about normality. So, normality is another concentration unit. N is equal to, this is denoted by capital N, N is equal to number of gram equivalent weights of solute upon volume of solution in liters. Now, what is equivalent weight? Equivalent weight is basically atomic or molecular weight upon valency. 
an equivalent weight of acid is molecular weight upon basicity of an acid. Here I want to give you an example. Suppose you want to find out the equivalent weight of uh, H2SO4. Now, first we have to find out the molecular weight that is 98 and basicity. Basicity means how many hydrogen atoms are present. So, in H2SO4 there are 2 hydrogen atoms. So, 98 divided by 249. So, equivalent weight of sulfuric acid is 49. So, this is a way to find out the equivalent weight. So, equivalent weight of base is molecular weight divided by acidity of uh, a base. Then equivalent weight of a salt that is molecular weight divided by total valency of the metal atom. Now, let us talk about the solubility. Now, solubility as the name is telling like it means the ability of solute to get dissolved in the solvent. So, solubility of a substance is the maximum amount that can be dissolved in given amount of solvent at specific temperature. Now, what are the factors that affects uh, solubility? One is nature of solute, other is nature of solvent, then temperature and pressure. Solubility of solid in uh, liquid, let us discuss that first. So, when a solid is dissolved in a liquid, the solid is referred as a solute and the liquid as solvent. This is what I showed you in the beginning of the uh, uh, this uh, chapter. For example, in the solute is sodium chloride and water is solvent. Different substances dissolved in different extent in the same solvent. Then solubility of solid uh, in liquid. So, polar solute dissolve in polar solvent. For example, NaCl and sugar dissolve in water. Non-polar solute dissolve in non-polar solvent. For example, if you take naphthalene or anthracene that dissolve in benzene, not in water. So, according to the nature of solute and solvent, the solubility of solid in a liquid follow the principle that like dissolves like. So, if the nature of solute and solvent is same, the intermolecular force of attraction would be the same. So, that helps the solubility of solute in solvent. Now, let us discuss solubility of liquid in liquids. When two liquids are mixed, three different situations may arise. Either, you know, what can uh, be there like both the liquids are completely miscible. That is, when two liquids are mixed, they dissolve in each other in all proportion like alcohol and water or benzene and toluene. The liquid are partially miscible that is they dissolve in each other only to a certain extent like water and phenol. The liquids are immiscible they do not dissolve in each other that is water and benzene or water toluene or water or oil this I showed you earlier. So, the solubility of liquid in liquid generally increases with rise in temperature. So, solubility of gases in liquid. Gases are generally soluble in liquids. Aquatic life exists because of the fact that gases are soluble in water. Oxygen is sufficiently soluble in water which allows the survival of aquatic life in ponds, rivers and ocean. Gases like carbon dioxide, ammonia are highly soluble in water. Now, here if you see the solubility of gas versus pressure. So, when we are applying the pressure, you will find the more solute, the particle of solute can be dissolved over uh, the solvent. Now, solubility of gas in a liquid, uh, the solubility of gases in a liquid depends on the pressure and temperature and the nature of the gas and the solvent. Now, effect of pressure, the variation of solubility of a gas in liquid with pressure is governed by Henry's law. So, Henry's law is what the partial pressure of a gas in vapor phase that is P is proportional to the mole fraction of gas x in solution. Now, expression for Henry's law, as we discussed in the uh, definition that is P is directly proportional to x. 
x here is a mole fraction of a solute. So, P is equal to kH into x. Now, kH is what? kH is Henry's law constant. So, the greater the value of kH, lesser would be the solubility. Let us now see what are the conditions for the validity of Henry's law. So, the condition for the uh, validity of Henry's law are like it is found that gases obey Henry's law under the following condition. The pressure should not be too high, the temperature is not too low, the gas does not dissociate, associate or enter into any chemical reaction with the solvent. What is the effect of temperature? The solubility of a gas in a liquid at constant pressure decreases with the rise in temperature. This happens because on heating a solution containing a dissolved gas, some gas usually expelled from the solution. That is why if you have noticed the aquatic species are more comfortable in the cold water than the warm water because more oxygen is dissolved in uh, cold water. Now, effect of nature of gas and the solvent. Gases like carbon dioxide, hydrochloric acid, ammonia, they are highly soluble in water, whereas hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen are sparingly soluble. Now, application of Henry's law. In manufacture of soft drinks and soda water, carbon dioxide is passed at high pressure to increase the solubility. So, more the pressure, more the solubility. To minimize the painful effects which are known as bends, accompanying the decompression of deep sea divers, oxygen diluted with less uh, soluble, the gas is used as breathing gas. To nullify the painful effect, an inert gas is added. Now, in higher altitudes, the partial pressure of oxygen is less than that at the ground level. So, the, this leads to the low concentration of oxygen in the blood of climbers which cause anoxia. That is why this is the reason why oxygen cylinder is carried by the uh, mountaineers to the mountain. So, now let us revise what we have done. First we have done like solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. Then we have done the concentration, molarity, molarity is expressed as a number of moles of solute per liter of solution, molality is expressed as a number of moles of solute per kilogram of solvent, normality is a concentration unit which tells the number of gram equivalent of solute per liter of solution. Mole fraction is the ratio of number of moles of one component to the total number of moles in the solution. Henry's law states that mass or mole fraction of a gas dissolved in a solvent is directly proportional to the partial pressure of the gas. So, here this ends the first part. Thank you.